In this video, I'm going to rank every brawler from worst to best, but this is different than my competitive tier list. We're gonna be splitting brawlers according to their rarity. Also, the tier list is about like the highest level of competition, the best competitive players and what the meta's like there. This is also different from my recent brawler unlock guide, which was made for new players. This video is pretty much for everybody else, okay? <laughs> if you're between 10,000 trophies and 40,000 trophies, this video is pretty much for you. First up, we have the starter brawler. It's Shelly. She's the best. She's the worst. There's only one starter brawler. So there you go, Shelly. <laughs> I'm next to the rare brawlers and at the very bottom, we have Bull. Bull starts out really good for new players, but he quickly falls off, especially in the current meta. Most of his damage is dealt point blank and his super leaves him really vulnerable the entire time he's using it. He's kind of like El Primo, but he's actually harder to use. I wanted to give a big thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Raid Shadow Legends is a free to play turn-based MMO game available on PC and mobile, so you can take it anywhere. Click that link below to download now for free. Right now, they're giving away a free legendary hero based off of pro wrestler Ronda Rousey, and all you have to do to collect is log into the game and play raid for seven days between now and February 28th, and then she's yours. And to celebrate Rhonda joining raid, you can use promo code Raid Rhonda to get a bunch of helpful stuff to level her up. Plus, new players who use my link or scan the QR code will get a free starter pack worth almost $30, including a free champion Tyrell. Just check your in-game inbox. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get exclusive rewards in raid right now as well. So click that link below, download the game for free, and join the worldwide community now. Now, up next, we got Colt. I know a lot of pro Colts out there are going to be upset at this, but Colt just uses so much skill for you guys to use competitively. Neither his main attack or his super are really easy to land or to like consistently deal full damage. So even the average player who has some skill with the game, I would recommend other brawlers over Colt. Next would be Barley. Barley kind of struggles right now unless you're using him to try and counter a different thrower. But even then, I think that he's probably the worst thrower in the game at the moment. Next has got to be El Primo. Today, El Primo is about like trying to just stay alive and take as much hits as you can so you can charge up your super because otherwise, it's just too hard to charge a super, but guess what? When your super is being charged by getting hit, so is the enemy team, which just kind of makes them a liability. Next for our brawler is going to be Nita. Nita's a pretty basic brawler, and she's actually pretty good for, like, the average player, I would say. She doesn't really get to control her super, but her bear is always going to be beneficial, and sometimes you can even use it in heist and get a lot of damage on the enemy safe using the right star power. Up next is Rosa. Rosa's never actually been a bad brawler, and she's very easy to use. Depending on how many walls are on the map or how many bushes there are, she is is actually pretty useful in pretty much any game mode. And if you can overlevel Rosa, then she's actually really good. Next, we've got Brock. Now, Brock's a long-range brawler, and usually long-range brawlers are, like, uh, not so easy to use, but his attack width is so wide, it's actually really easy to hit your shots with him, which allows him to keep enemies away and do lots of damage, so he's actually really solid. And what I would consider to be the best rare brawler, that's gotta be Poco, like, not even close. Poco got buffed a few updates ago, and I think that he's been a really good brawler for a really long time. Even if they do decide to nerf him, he's He's always been a really simple brawler to use and like yeah he might not deal a bunch of damage like it might be boring to play support brawler but he is always solid and I really don't think you can go wrong with him. Next to the super rare brawlers in the very bottom has got to be Jackie. Jackie is one of the most basic brawlers in the game and she's incredibly easy to use so if you were like absolutely terrible at the game like feel free to play Jackie. But the problem is once anybody has gotten any amount of skill then uh, they learn that all they have to do is just stay away from her and stay away from walls so she's not that great. Slightly better than Jackie this just makes me so sad I love Jessie but she is uh, next. I really like Jessie. I think her mechanics are really cool, and that's not just a pun. She's really awesome. But even the average player is pretty good at staying away from teammates so that she doesn't hit her bounce shots very often, and her turret's actually pretty easy to deal with. Up next is Gus. Gus is actually a very competitive brawler. He's really good at high skill matches, but in order for you to play him, you gotta have a lot of experience in the game before he can be, like, really strong. He can be really good if you know what you're doing and if your team knows what they're doing, but otherwise, there are better options for you to unlock upgrades and play. Ugh. Up next is Rico. I am a big fan of Rico. I love playing Rico, but he takes a lot of skill to use, especially if you're going to try and do some bounce shots off of some walls and stuff like that. He's still good even if you don't have walls to use. However, he's kind of like Colt at that point, and I would love to rank him higher, but for the average player, I think he's a little bit lower on this tier list. Well, not tier list. This is not a tier list. Make sure you guys do subscribe for my tier list because I do update that every season. In the middle of the super rare brawlers is 8-Bit. 8-Bit's attack is very narrow, but he does have a lot of range, so as long as you know how to aim with him, he's actually pretty good. However, he is a little bit more like boring. I don't want to say boring, but he, he takes a little bit of getting used to how slow he is. But as long as you can get over that, he's pretty solid. Up next, we got Daryl. Daryl's also in the middle of the super rare brawlers. He's pretty easy to use, but there are some really cool things that you can do with his super. And like, he's got a lot of HP. He's a very forgiving brawler to play. Like if you make a mistake, he got a lot of HP to work with. Up next, we've got Tick. And Tick is probably one of the easiest throwers for you to play because like his attacks are so wide. So like you're unlikely to deal all of your damage with 
with every single attack, but it's very likely that you'll at least hit one of the three mines on an enemy player. And that's what actually makes him so easy to use and great, as, as well as his super, which is so strong, and does a ton of damage. I'd argue that not only is he easier than Barley, he's also better at dealing damage than Barley. Up next, we've got Dynamite. Now, if I'm honest, I actually consider putting Dynamite a little bit higher on this ranking for the Super Rare Brawlers because he recently got a really solid buff that has made it so much easier to use him. And now you're able to more consistently actually deal damage against the enemy. And he really deals a lot of damage, so you can definitely consider him. Up next is Penny. And honestly, Penny is one of the best Super Rare Brawlers for the average player. Her super actually deals an insane amount of damage and it does so pretty frequently. And it's really easy to place that turret in a spot where enemies are not gonna be able to easily get rid of it. She has a fast unload speed. So like unloading her attacks really, really quickly when somebody's close to you is really easy to do and she can deal a lot of damage then. And also her attack width isn't too narrow. She can hit her shots pretty well for the average player. But I would say the best super rare brawler has got to be Carl. There are not a lot of brawlers that counter Carl and he is pretty much always a safe choice. In fact, Carl has been one of the best brawlers in the game for a long period of time. And I don't know what it is, but like Supercell just is, they're not willing to nerf him. And I, you know, I don't know why. Maybe it's because a lot of people actually don't play him very often. However, I can guarantee you if you have not played Carl recently, you've got to try him. He is an absolute beast. And in my opinion, the best super rare brawler for in the game, not even competitively, just in general. He's really amazing. Up next, we got the epic brawlers. Starting off at the very bottom is Nani. Now, Nani is not necessarily a bad brawler. She's just very difficult to use. Her main attack can deal some insane damage if you hit the enemy just perfect, but you have to have major precision and you have to aim her super the entire time you're using it. She can be amazing in knockout. I will admit that but she's definitely on the lower side of things unless you're a really skilled player. Up next has got to be BB. She needs to be really close to enemies in order for you to do something, but the thing is, is her knockback ability actually gets enemies away from her, which is very tricky to learn how to use. On top of that, she also has a little bit of a delay when she actually attacks, which makes her pretty tricky to use successfully, and a lot of people are pretty good at keeping her away from her. Next, we got Frank. Now, as far as tanks go, Frank is one of the hardest ones to play. He does have some of the most HP in the game, but he has to stand completely still whenever he attacks and uses his super. That takes a lot of getting used to, and there are a ton of enemies that can actually disrupt him so that he ends up not actually supering, or maybe they just run away too. Like, that happens a lot too. Like, I love Frank, but he's definitely on the lower side of things when it comes to the epic brawlers. Next, we've got Grom. Grom's a little bit different than most of the throwers because of the plus-shaped attack pattern that he has. It's actually really easy to dodge if you're just paying a little bit of attention, so you have to have really good aim with Grom, or you have to work with your teammates in order to land your shots, and that's not always easy to do with randoms or like if you're not in a competitive setting. Okay, this might surprise some of you, but I'm putting Edgar next. Edgar is arguably the worst brawler in the game, at least from a competitive standpoint. So why am I putting him in the middle of the epic brawlers? Well, he's a lot of fun to play. And if he and he actually is not that bad if you're playing with people around like 500 trophies ish, right? But once you start playing against players that do have a little bit of experience, he's really terrible. And also he's usually only really good if he doesn't get hard countered or against brawlers that he is able to counter. Next, we've got Piper. Piper is probably the hardest sharpshooter to play because she can't really be played at close range. So you have to be dealing max damage from a long distance away. However, her attacks are fairly wide. On top of that, her projectile is very fast. I do think that she's one of the hardest sharpshooters to pick up, but definitely not so difficult that the average player can't pick her up and figure her out. Next, we've got Pam. Pam's gonna deal a lot more damage if you have good movement and aim correctly, but you can still just get by with her with auto aiming, right? Also, her super is really easy to place in a good safe spot so that you can heal yourself and your teammates. And once you figure out those basics of Pam, she's really solid. And like overall, she might not be like the best in any situation, but she's way better than average in most situations, which is why she's so high on this list. Up next, we've got B. B is one of the best sharpshooters in the game. And most sharpshooters take a lot of skill to actually use. However, B is not the most difficult to use because she can deal massive damage up close. Plus she has a super that allows her to hit hit enemies that are far away very easily and do lots of damage. And you don't really have to about worry about ammo conservation with her. And that makes her a great pick for the average player. Up next is Bo. Bo's attack has really good range. And as long as you're just like moving the right way, it has an incredibly wide spread, making it very easy to actually hit your shots. And his mines are actually insanely good against most players if they're not incredibly competitive. So as long as you place them in a good spot, you're almost always guaranteed to deal some decent damage with 
Lambo. Up next is Stu. Now, Stu is a brawler that if you get very good with, he is going to be amazing. And he does have a high skill cap, but he's also very easy to pick up and start using. His shots travel fast and his super will just go in the direction you're moving, even if you auto aim it. And he's a lot of fun to play. Up next is Ems, the third best epic brawler in my opinion right now. She has a very wide attack and for how easy it is to hit your enemies, she actually does a lot of damage, right? Unless the whole enemy team just completely outranges her, she can pretty much be played on almost any map in the game and pretty much any game mode and be able to do pretty well. The second best epic brawler has got to be Bonnie. Her main attack is actually pretty easy to hit, even at max range because of how wide it is and how fast it is. But you do have to worry about her movement speed, which is slow when she is hitting her cannon form. That's always tough to work around, but her super is one of the best in the game. Also, she's just really fun to play, and that's one of the reasons why I have her rated so high because, like, you know, the most important thing when you're not a super competitive player is, like, having fun, right? And, you know, winning. That's why the, I, winning is more fun. That's why I'm making this tier list. Or then that's not a tier list. But the best epic brawler by far has got to be Griff. He is arguably one of the best brawlers in the game. Like, a lot of people think that he really is the best, and he's very easy to play. He deals tons of damage, and that makes him great in pretty much any game mode, any map. He is definitely worth playing. Up next, we got the Mythic Brawlers. This is where it starts to take a lot of time for you to unlock your brawlers. So this is where you want to start really paying attention if you don't have all the brawlers unlocked already. Oh, it makes me sad to do this, but Byron has got to be at the very bottom. He was actually one of the best brawlers in the game for a long time, but he was nerfed recently, and now he is one of the worst brawlers in the game. Whether he becomes really good again or not, it doesn't really matter because right now he's tough. And like, I, if you guys want me to, I can update this type of video in the future if Byron happens to get a really big change. Next, we've got Mr. P. Mr. P's attack can be pretty tough to use if the enemy's at max range, and his porters just automatically go, and yes, they do have a fair amount of HP, but like, pretty much everybody's able to just take them out pretty quickly. Most players don't even have to really worry about them because their DPS is so high. I would put Mr. P a little bit higher on this tier list, but he's been at the bottom tier for the tier list for quite a few seasons now, so it's tough to justify that. Next, we've got Sprout. Sprout is a good thrower, but it's a little bit harder to use than some of the other throwers. Also, it doesn't have any answer to close range combat except for using its wall to push an enemy away, but that takes a lot of accuracy and like, that's hard to pull off sometimes. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're doing Mortis here now. Mortis is surprisingly not at the bottom of the mythic rarity, right? Mortis takes a lot of skill to use. And even if you are a great Mortis, there are quite a few brawlers in the game that he just cannot play against because they counter him so hard. Around the 500 trophy range area though, he's actually a lot of fun to play. Just keep in mind that he'll probably get countered a lot. So like, you know, keep that. He's fun. He's fun. He's, he's worth trying. He's worth unlocking. But yeah. Next, we've got Gray. Now, Gray has not been available for very long, so I'm still forming an opinion, but he is a lot of fun. He has some really cool mechanics to him that make him really sneaky, especially in Brawl Ball. With that said, though, his attacks are very narrow and he has a very slow unload speed like you should not be auto aiming with his attack unless the enemy is within two tiles of you that's it that's all the auto aim range that he has and even if you aren't auto aiming and you're pretty good at hitting your shots guess what it's pretty it's hard to hit your shots it really is he's really difficult to master but he does have a lot of potential so yeah i feel like the middle of the mythic tier is probably pretty good for him up next we've got gene gene is one of the easiest attacks to use because of how far it spreads out and the distance that it actually travels. However, he also has one of the hardest supers in the game because it takes so long to charge it up, and if you miss it, it could be the difference between winning and losing the match. And or, or even if you just like use it on the wrong enemy, sometimes you'll lose just because of that. He's really good competitively, but in a less competitive meta, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's actually really good. He's a great pick, but there are three better options. And starting us off at the top three is Squeak. Squeak can deal a lot of damage to enemies, even if he doesn't actually hit them directly with his projectiles. You do still have to aim with his attacks, but like you can still hit people on the opposite side of walls and stuff like that. And like a lot of times in non competitive matches, players will still bunch up sometimes. And like you can hit multiple people with the same attack. It's actually really awesome. And uh, Squeak's really solid. Plus, if you can slow somebody with Squeak Super, they are just, uh, they're, they're in a world of heart, obviously, with the right star power. The number two mythic brawler has got to be Terra. Terra has one of the most powerful supers in the game, but it does take a little practice to use to its full potential. She's another one of those brawlers that can be pretty useful in like any game mode. Her super might be a little bit high risk, high reward, but she's actually pretty easy to use because her attacks are able to like have such a wide spread. And if you get really close to an enemy, she's also really good at unloading her attacks really quickly and dealing lots of damage. But the number one mythic brawler has got 
gotta be Max. Now, I would say this is true both competitively and for the average player. Max has enough range and deals enough damage to where she can be useful in pretty much any game mode. Her super also gives her team a huge advantage as long as you are playing with your teammates, then Max is really fantastic. Up next, we got the legendary brawlers, what a lot of you are probably hoping for in this video. And at the bottom, <laughs> we've got Meg. Poor Meg. She kind of gets bullied on. Meg is a lot more complicated than the other legendary brawlers, and she has been through a roller coaster of balance changes since she's released. Sometimes she's just ridiculously strong, but most of the time, she's just really weak and kind of inconsistent. And like, if, I'm, if this video is about telling you which brawlers to actually put your resources in, to, Meg has got to be lower on the list. Second lowest legendary on this is Amber. Amber's main attack is actually very easy to use because you can auto aim with it almost 100% of the time and like 90% of the time that's going to be the best way to use her attack. But her super does require some good timing. One of the biggest reasons why I wouldn't rush to unlock her is just because she isn't quite as good as the other legendary brawlers are in multiple game modes. She's mostly useful at countering really high HP brawlers or brawlers that are like close range assassins. Next we got Sandy. I don't know if this looks like third worst, but Sandy's actually really solid. Sandy's always been a decent brawler and is one of the simplest brawlers in the game to play. Not only are his abilities easy to use, but his super is incredibly useful and helps the whole team. The trickiest thing with Sandy is just being able to get within range to be actually able to deal some damage. But once you do that, you can auto him with him and he's really great. Now this might be a little controversial, but up next I'm going to put Leon. I say controversial because some people really love Leon a lot and think that Leon is a lot better than I think that Leon is. But that's not to say that Leon's not good because Leon is a good brawler and has been ever since he was released. His super is very simple and that makes his main attack a lot better since it deals most of the damage up close. And to be clear, I personally think that Sandy's actually a little bit better than Leon, but not by much. And I think that Leon is a lot more fun to play. So uh, <laughs> that's why I, I, this is, we're putting fun a little bit into this this not tier list. Starting off the top three legendary brawlers is Chester. Chester's actually a lot easier to play than I thought he would be because his attacks are so easy to hit, especially like, like, okay, literally like, even his one bell attack or one projectile attack is not that difficult, but two, is very easy to hit and three and four is even is ridiculous like you're all you don't even have to actually aim your shots when you have four plus chester can deal an insane amount of damage you just have to be a little bit careful with his random super but even that was a lot easier to manage than i thought it would be he's really not too hard to pick up and i think he's number three legendary brawler right now and number two i've got to say is crow despite being called a toxic assassin it actually takes a while for him to take out brawlers and usually he's best played as a long range damage over time just kind of control brawler rather than actually jump in on people with his super but his attacks are very easy to land his super can deal crazy amount of damage if you aim it just right and he's a lot of fun to play and like very competitive as well especially as a counter to healers and the reason for that is that enemies that are poisoned by his attacks will actually have their healing decrease in half and the best legendary brawler in my opinion is spike i don't think there's ever been a time when spike wasn't a good brawler he chips away at enemies from a long range and deals huge damage at close range plus he can slow enemies with his super he's just never had any weakness there might have been times when he wasn't the strongest, the absolute strongest, but Spike has pretty much never been bad. And so that's why I think that he deserves the top spot in Legendary. And next we've got the Chromatic Brawlers. And kicking us off at the bottom is Colette. Colette's main attack has a fast projectile speed, so they're very easy to land, but the damage that she deals can be very confusing. And honestly, she's only really good in Heist or to counter tanky brawlers. If you're just playing in the average match and you don't know what the enemy team is going to be playing, chances are they're not going to be playing a tank. So she just kind of struggles and like, and the percentage is weird. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Next, we got Colonel Ruffs. Ruffs is another support brawler, so you need to know what you are doing when you are playing with him. And honestly, most of the time, you should just throw his super on one of your teammates, like the vast majority of the time. Plus, he's got some bounce shots with his attack that are a little bit tricky to fully utilize. And unless you can really trust your team, I recommend going with other brawler. Next, we've got Lou. Lou's attack is really simple. It's just really hard to hit all of his shots with him, kind of like Colt. His super is really good and it's easy to use, but because his shots are so hard to hit, he doesn't charge up his super very often unless you have really good aim. And at that point, well, you're, re you're ready for the competitive tier list. Next, we've got Surge. Even though Surge does have to get past that first upgrade in order for him to be a good brawler, it's not that hard to do unless you're playing against really skilled 
play, well, players that just keep their distance and don't really charge their, your super on them. But every time you die, that resets his upgrades, and that's just asking a lot for the average player because in most matches, the average player will die at least three times, and most of the time, a lot more than that. Next, we've got Sam. Sam is one of the most complicated brawlers in the game. Pretty much everything that he does rearranges his stats, and then they could go back to normal in an instant. And there are many different ways to use this to your advantage, but as a close range brawler, he does struggle. He's not the easiest to master, and he's not the, he's not even the best competitively. So that's why he's on the lower end of the chromatic brawlers. Up next, we got Buzz. You have to have really good aim to play Buzz because his super has a lot of range, and unless you can consistently latch onto enemies with it, he can't do it very much. On top of that, you have to know when you're going to jump onto enemies, when you can take them out, or at least be aware of where the other enemies are so that you don't get 2v1 when you do jump onto somebody. Next, we got Fang. Fang's super is actually very easy to use, and if you're close to somebody, you can just auto aim his attack. He's actually pretty easy. However, you can only really jump on people if you have his super charged up. In order for you to do that, you have to hit from a distance, and his his aiming reticle doesn't actually show his where his shoe will go. That makes it really difficult for you to actually aim with him. And for most players, I think he's a little bit lower on the list, although we are about to like the, uh, the halfway mark with the chromatics. Up next, we got Bell. Bell's another sharpshooter, but her projectiles are actually very fast and not too difficult for you to actually hit. She can successfully auto aim at close range with her attack and her super, so overall, she's pretty safe to use as a sniper for most players. Next, we've got Otis. Otis is one of the most competitive brawlers at the moment. His attack can deal lots of damage, but it can be very difficult to land every projectile from one ammo, and his super needs to be used at the right time or it won't make much of a difference unless you're just going from the damage that actually comes from it. He is arguably one of the best competitive options right now. However, he's about in the middle of the chromatic brawlers for most players. Up next is Eve. Eve has been through several nerfs since she was released, and she is still a very competitive option. Even not, not competitive. It's not too hard for you to actually hit her shots, at least with the very big egg, right? Because the eggs are three different sizes, and one of them is really hard to hit, one of them is really easy to hit. On top of that, they all deal different amount of damage, so you have to hit them with the right ones. But she can walk over water, which gives her a lot of escape options, and she's got a fantastic gadget for that as well. Next, we've got Ash. Ash's attack and super make him look like a simple brawler, but he is actually all about the rage bar. It can be really difficult to take just the right amount of damage and to heal for just the right amount of time to keep his rage bar full for as long as possible. He's a little tricky to master, but he's also really strong if you're able to do so. Up next, we've got Lola. Lola's attack is pretty basic, but it deals a ton of damage for how far it can actually reach. And as long as you place your super in the right places, her super is also very simple because like you just put her right on top of herself and then it's basically just like her regular attack that Lola does, right? I'd actually put her at number four out of all the chromatics. And the third best chromatic brawler right now is probably Gale. Gale did recently get a few nerfs in the last update, but I would still say he's a good brawler and he's one of the easiest chromatic brawlers to use because like his attack wide range is super wide. He's got a lot of survivability and his ability to like blow enemies away. Plus he also has his tornado, which is really cheesy and kind of fun to use. Also his damage is really solid and overall a really great pick. Next we've got Buster. Buster is very strong at close range and he was picked a lot in the Brawl Stars World Championship. But on top of being a very highly competitive option, he's also really easy to use. And instead of having to dodge attacks, you can just use your super as a shield to block them, which is actually really cool. And I think it putting him in number two for chromatic brawlers is very justified. But number one has got to be Janet. I will admit that Janet's attacks do require a little bit of getting used to for you to manually aim and be able to like increase the range of them and stuff like that. But her attack covers a huge area, can hit multiple enemies. Plus you get multiple bombs from her super if you, as long as you time things right. Yeah, she's might have a, a fairly high skill cap, but she's one of the most competitive options, and the fact that her attack range is pretty wide, very easy to pick up in my opinion, and I would say is the best chromatic brawler. And there you have every brawler ranked from worst to best. Make sure you guys grab that screenshot, and don't forget that Shelly is at the very bottom. I, I don't have space for her, so. <laughs> Obviously, all this is my opinion, but I would love to know your guys' opinions if you disagree with anything, so let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe for the future tier list, and also, if you're a newer player and you want a guide on which brawlers to unlock, make sure you check out this video, or watch this video, because this one's fun as well. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by. We will see you in Brawl Stars.